real authenticated API calls built on top of Firebase Authentication and the Firebase Real-Time Database, it's possible. It's not just a dream. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluent. Today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be taking an existing project that we have set up with Angular and Firebase Functions and add in authentication so that we can make authenticated requests from the client using Firebase Authentication, Angular Fire, and the Real-Time Database. Let's take a look. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be picking up right from where we left off at the last demo. So what we had accomplished last time was we had set up a Firebase function which creates a express application and responds on slash hello to any uh, request that a user makes that API endpoint, responds it and renders it in our app component. So we see hello demo and then hello everyone, which is coming from the real-time database. But the piece that we're missing here is that what if we wanted to create a new API endpoint? So let's imagine an API endpoint such as app dot put to slash hello. So what if the user wanted to be able to overwrite the uh, information that was being put here? So we've got the response. So right now, anyone could do this, which would be okay, right? If we if we said const db, let's actually just copy most of this code over. And what we could say is instead of ref.once, we could say ref.set, and we could set it to be some value. Maybe that's request.body, uh, hello. So let's check the body of our request for a response. And let's, as always, catch our errors. And let's just pass it directly to console.error. So this should theoretically work. We can actually build a really simple button to test this out. And so we'll do that here. So we'll create a update method that doesn't exist yet. And so in our app component, we'll create this update method. And then we will go ahead and hit our API endpoint with that. So we're gonna say this.http, we'll need to make this private here. And we'll say this.http.put, and we're gonna hit the endpoint. And so at this point, we're gonna use the same endpoint. So we'll just abstract that. We'll just pass that to both of these. And then what, here we can say the hello property is going to equal value. So if we take a look at our API, we should see upgrade value to world. When we click on this, uh, we actually need to subscribe so that we actually execute that function and not just define it. Uh, and when we hit update value to world in our dev tools, we should see that it creates a network request. And uh, if our API is listening and we have no errors, which we shouldn't have any. Oh, I have accidentally imported something here, which we can just get rid of that. All right, so if we don't have any errors which we shouldn't as soon as the build is complete, we should be able to now hit this idea of update value to hello. All right, so our page works, we see hello everyone, and let's change that value to world. And again, we're not gonna see this in real time because we're not actually using the real time database, we're using a custom API on top of it. Um, but we can see we've got our put request here is pending and we never actually responded. And so what we should probably do is uh, res.send. We'll just send a simple message right now so that we get an actual response from our API. So when I hit update value to world, we're gonna get a pending request one of the really annoying things that every time you make a change to your server, you have to actually kill your server. So uh, even though I've coded this correctly, we're gonna have to kill it and restart, which will run TSC again. And then what should happen is uh, as soon as I hit refresh, we should see that 
we can update the value to world, it says hello world, and we can do the exact opposite if we go back into our component and we create another one that says everyone. Now remember, this only works because we're operating on a uh, custom API on top of a locked database. So if I update the value to everyone, that should have worked. Worked, great. So now when we hit refresh, hello everyone. All right, so we have a custom API, but the thing we're not doing right now is authenticating the user. And so in order to set up authentication, I'm going to go ahead and skip the auth setup on the client side, and we'll come back when I have a login button. All right, let's resume. So I've now built this login button that if you follow the path, uh, the login button calls this login method, which creates a uses Angular Fire auth to sign in with pop-up using Google provider. I had to do the appropriate project setup and configuration of the Angular Fire module and Angular Fire auth module. I also had to install Firebase so that I could do the appropriate import of this auth method. So that should all be working. When I click on login, I should see a pop it up from Firebase to authenticate me because I've already authenticated. It's just going to resolve. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can actually update both of these API calls that I'm making with this put. And so the thing that I want to do here is I want to make sure that I'm passing in the authentication information. So what you can do is you can actually just use the token that you get from Angular Fire in order to see that. And so one of the things that I could do is I could say token. And what I could then do is I could within my constructor, I could listen to the user information and say, if this dot af auth dot subscribe, take in a user. And then we're going to take this user, and we're going to say get ID token dot then, and we'll say token goes to this dot token equals token. So again, this is a little bit of a hack. We're doing subscribe in my constructor, which I shouldn't be doing. And then I'm just resolving the uh, token like this. But what we should be able to see then is if we actually print this out here, we can see that we have a token because we're authenticated user. And let's add some helpful divs, which we should have done in the first place. final one here around our buttons. All right, so we have a blank token right now. Let's figure out why that token is blank. Looks like I made a slight typo here where we're actually supposed to be subscribing to the user of AFAuth, not the AFAuth object itself, and we now have a token. So what we're going to be doing is every time we make a HPI request, we're going to be using that token so that we can pass that to the backend and we can verify who the user is. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we can do is we're going to take our put and we're going to add that here into our body. So we're not just going to send the value that we want to set it to. We're also going to send the token and we're just going to say this stuff token. Again, you have to make sure that the asynchronous places have resolved before the user actually hits that button. But for our simple, simple example here, this should all just work out. Now, what we can do is now we're sending that token, we can verify that token and actually get the user's ID over in our API layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back to the API layer and go ahead and do that. So the way that you would actually do this is, so I tend to met, write a method called verify token. And so we could put this in another file, but I'll just put it here for now. And I'll say const verify token equals some sort of request object. And we know that we're going to go ahead and fetch that request object. And we know that this token is going to be a string and we're going to set it to the body token. Or possibly, if this was a GET request, we could also do the same thing from the query. And what we can do is we can say return admin dot auth. So again, just like we were fetching the admin dot database before, we're now fetching admin dot auth. And there's a verify ID token method. And what that does is that is going to return you a promise of the decoded ID token which we're going to do something with in just a moment. So we're going to take in our put command, we're going to add in this verify ID token. We've got our verify token method, and we're going to pass in the request.
Now this de this decoded method is actually a promise. So one of the things we can do is we can say decoded dot then. And we can do things like if decoded dot UID, then do all of these edits. Oops, we did not copy and paste that correctly. Let's try that again. All right, so again, what we're doing is we're verifying the token of the request. Then we're using that decoded symbol to look up the UID of the user and making sure that we have a UID so that they are an authenticated user of the system. And if we wanted to, we could then use that UID. We could actually query the real-time database, check that they have the right permissions to be accessing it, whether uh, you're making, for example, a messaging app where you need to make sure that they can only write to the messages being received by a user or something like that. You want, want to be doing the actual authentication to make sure that you actually want to be doing the authorization to make sure that this UID has the right level of permissions to be doing the things you want them to be doing. Uh, but for our case, just saying, do they have a valid user is enough. Let's go head back and now let's actually refresh all these pieces. And what we should see is that when this all comes back up, we can now make an authenticated request to update the value to world, update the value to everyone. That's going to verify that we have signed in, that we have a UID so that we pass that to the back end, verify it again on the server side, and then use that to actually make the change. All right, our API is up and running. So let's go ahead and check and see if our update value to world works. So we're gonna make that request. It seems like it worked. And if we take, if we refresh the page, we should see hello world. If we update value to everyone. We're gonna again see in our headers that we're sending down both a token and a value. And if we refresh, we should see that it works. So now our API is able to authenticate our user. We're actually able to uh, valid using the user's token in a very secure way, figure out their UID, and then make changes to the database based on that. And so we have completely set up now a authenticated API request to a custom API on top of the FireTime real-time database, uh, which ignores all of the rules that you have set up, uh, which gives you a much greater level of degree of flexibility and control over your real-time database. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. We just saw the ways that you can take an existing Angular application that's set up with Firebase functions and Firebase authentication and add in authenticated API calls using our little express server. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.